In this video, we're gonna do a little bit of troubleshooting. I have two controller boards for Defender. This one's mine, this one's my brother's. Uh, I think this is the earlier board, but they both still work in Defender. It's just, you know, a little bit different. On his game, his ship just goes down. All the time, you unplug the controls, it still goes down. So let's uh, plug this in real quick and see if it's also the problem in mine. These games have several boards, um, but it does make troubleshooting a little bit easier when you can isolate things like this. Okay, well, let's just do a sloppy job. Plug that in. All right, let's go turn it on. See if we still have the same issue on my game, and then we'll know if it's that board or not, and work from there. Defender's on-off switch is right here. Oops, let me turn on the main power. Oh, the safety. Um, here it is. I always forget this thing. Okay, now mine has a RAM issue. So it's going to say, hey, you got a RAM failure. But it will still let you play. It, uh, it's just giving you a heads up, something's wrong. This game's in pretty good shape. I just have to fix the monitor a bit. It's uh, jittery. It's got some bad connections. Come on. There we go. All right. Did I not? Duh. Oh, duh. Okay, let's turn this off. And plug in the controls. All right, now let's pull this out. Listen to all this stuff, and I'll skip because you don't want to watch this RAM thing again. Let's skip ahead. All right, here we go. Oh, it's that board, look at that. So we isolated the problem. Easy, easy. Nice having multiple board sets, isn't it? So for sure, this is the issue. So there's only uh, one part that I know is an easy fix, and that's the capacitor on there. So let's just change the capacitor since it's so old anyway and see if that one thing fixes the problem. All right, so I'm going to just take a stab in the dark and replace this capacitor. It is a um, 100 microfarad 25 volts. I have an equivalent here. I already tested this one and the uh, resistance is testing really high. Let me show you. See, this is 0.3 and this one is... Four. Oh, that's different from the last time. It was six a second ago. Strange. Let's uh, change it anyway. Because this is what? I mean, when was this game made? Early 80s? Long time ago. This is positive. Same ratings on this cap, it's just uh, same values on the cap. I mean, it's just so much smaller, these newer ones. There we go, we're in. Wouldn't it be nice if this was it? I think it might be a chip problem. I don't. 
I'm about 50-50 on this repair, whether this will work or not. All right, let's plug it in and see. One, just enough to hold it on. Two screws. Okay. There we go. Fifty percent. I'd say maybe thirty percent, twenty percent. I think it'll work. Um, I, I don't know. I know when they go out of uh, whack, they can mess stuff up. Would be nice if that's all it was. See how jittery it gets. Easy. F all right, here we go. Come on. Oh, it's still down. All right, it's something else. So that's a RAM issue there. All right, let's go back to the uh, bench. So what luck, Adam from One Circuit just uploaded on his first Q&A video. I mean, just now, I just watched it. He just did these Q&A video, uh, Q video, and the first question was exactly this problem. He talks about, you know, a uh, switch. In that case, it was a coin, a coin up, um, always being stuck on, on even if the uh, switch is disconnected. And uh, and he also brought up, you know, the, the player keeps moving in the one direction, even though all the controls are disconnected. So it turns out he um, suspected it would be the little capacitor is shorted to ground. Not sure how that would happen. I figured if the capacitor was bad, it would just be, you know, an open circuit, but I don't know. I don't understand it, but it was the same capacitor. So what I'm gonna do, and this, I followed the traces. It's it's this one it, that is the down. So I'm gonna disconnect this, and it should, if this is the problem, stop the ship from going down. Now it doesn't fix it because I won't be able to go down, but at least I'll, I'll know I'm barking up the right tree. Let's pull this guy out. There we go. And turn it on. So you have the input, which one is it? This one here, you follow the trace underneath the board. It comes all the way to here to this resistor which one? This one. And then it comes through here. This is ground. All of these are connected to ground underneath. All of these right here. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. I'm just curious, so curious to see if this fixed it. Well, it's not, again, it's not going to fix it. But I don't get why it, you know, I replaced that capacitor pulled one off a different board and it didn't fix it. Why not? I mean, it was pretty cut and dry if you watch his video. Come on, hurry up. Okay, where's the screws? All right, one, two. Man, it should work. That should be it. I mean, I guess it could be the, uh, chip here totally could be that so all I did was lift up the cap and that's it so there's no grounding of that cap now let's turn it on and again see what happens and we'll of course have to wait for the ram error Okay, it started up, and you can see this uh, ram is really screwing with it. 
So this is just a big uh, education experience for me. Let's see what we learn from this. Dang it! Why is it doing that? If it's disconnected... Why is it still going down? Could it be the chip instead? I don't know, man. Okay, we'll figure this out. Okay. All right, I have tried a lot of things. Been wrong every time. Um, we've replaced this um, res pack there, resistor. We are going to, this is a good board, so we're gonna show the readings here of what it should read. Now, if I can, racking my brain to figure this out, but we're gonna narrow down the problem. So first we're gonna get a good reading. I'm gonna measure um, the voltage here. This is, this one would be down. Okay, 4.6 volts, that's close enough. And I got my black lead on ground. Now we're gonna to go to pin five. That's where it follows through. And it should be high. So we'll hit pin five. Okay, it goes in high and it's a inverter buffer or whatever. So it should come out of pin four low. This should be, see that? Zero on the display there. So input of five, output of zero. Perfect. Now we should get on pin nine down there an output of zero. And I know we do because this is working fine. So let's put in the bad board now, huh? All right. These boards are actually slightly different. Let's take a look. Um, at least I thought they were. Are they not? Yeah, look at... This one has an extra set of chips here. Which for some reason, I didn't even notice. Why? Huh. I don't know. What do those do? Whatever, I mean, look at. And there's some more resistors here in the corner. Yeah, figure that out later. Okay, so this board we are going to test pin four and five. Same thing, let's turn it on. See that? Yeah, good enough. Okay. So, uh, we'll hit ground again. And, let's see. Uh, this would be one, two, three, four, five. One volt. Look at that going in. One volt. That's not right. Let's go on this side. One volt. What about the ones next to it? Ah, something's still bad here. It's before this chip. So if one's going in, that's not enough. Oh, yeah, it inverted it. Look at that. Output is high. Four and a half, it took the one volt, which was a low, to the chip. And then next pin over, it put it to high. Why is that a one? Well, let's follow all of this stuff. So, interesting. Okay, so the problems before that, I didn't think so. I thought it was that chip. I thought we'd have to replace it, but that chip is good. Uh, okay. Let me go back to the schematic and find out why this is so low. Must be... Okay, so that's low. 
Hmm. I think it's just a bad resistor. Thought I, t I thought I checked that. I don't know. Let's test the resistor. This one has a resistance of 0. almost 1. The one next to it has a resistance of almost 1. Now this is the bad one. Has a resistance of one. So that's good. Those resistors are good. Is it just the capacitor? Huh. Let's figure this out. Uh, that's the pull off. We changed that. That's good. I mean, there's only these two parts here, so it must be a bad capacitor. I tested the capacitor. It was a good capacitor. I put it in a good working board. Why would that be one volt? Why is that pulled down? I don't know. Let me think about it. This is actually starting to drive me a little nuts. I think I figured it out. I am going to take, you know, a lot of these aren't used and this is number two, I think. And this is not used. So I'm going to take this capacitor out because I don't have a replacement on hand. Okay, we're going to pull this up. Okay. And we're going to take this one off because we don't need it. Come on, come out. Not coming out. There we go. All right, we got this one. Now I don't even really have to take this all the way out. I can just leave it. I think I'll do that. It's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, now that might work. Let's see, let's get it on camera. So this is just my sloppy mess. We took out the capacitor from here because it's you don't need it. Popped it in there. Oh, let's see if this works. Wouldn't that be awesome? Okay, <laughs> wires on. <sighs> oh, I don't know if I can handle the uh, Disappointment if this doesn't work. Oh my gosh. What is causing that five to be lost? What is causing it? Where is that voltage going? This is so simple. I mean, I am so overlooking some. It's not the capacitor. The five is drained somewhere. Where's the five going? I have no idea. <sighs> I checked the connections on it. Make sure. I, I don't know. <sighs> where is it going? Let me hit, hook the meter up again and see if I can find out where the voltage is getting lost. So I don't know what's going on, but I measured the resistance again from this pin to this pin and it's not 4.7, it's like two something. This is a new chip. Something's going on to, to ruin the resistance between. I don't know, but because there's so many um, unused sections here, I mean, all of these mostly are unused. So instead of this being down, this pin's now going to be down. So I reroute, uh, routed the power and it jumps across. So it still makes contact with this chip, which I, I know is good. It's inverting like it should. So now, we bypassed 
the course that it was going through, which is all crazy. And uh, now we're going through a different, we're going through that pin, which would be, well, I don't know. If that's one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Instead of nine, we're going through eight. And then I had to jump over so I could make the connection to here. Can you believe this? This is craziness. I am so sick of this, but you know, I learned a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna hook these up so I can start the game, but because these pins are in the wrong spot now, I won't be able to move the ship down because, what is it, this red one needs to be up here to pin two. But I can at least, all the rest, everything else is the same, all right? So, so on the other arcade game, I need to move this pin up there and everything should be good. Let's see if this works, because everything else on the controller works. All the, the, all the other buttons work, you can push up, you can push everything. It's just the down, I don't know, it's craziness. Driving me insane. So I scratched off some traces so that it wouldn't go. Otherwise, this one would go back to a pin there. It needs to jump over here and go to this one where it should go. Okay. Okay, here we go. And I don't know how it could have this problem now. I mean, I, I rerouted the whole thing. <sighs> rerouted. Rerouted. Oh. Uh. Can I get a break? So, if you're having this problem, I would suggest not buy new chips and parts. Just take advantage of another pin that's not being used because it still has all the capacitors and the resistors on it and the buffers. It's just sitting there, just dormant. All right. Here we go. Holy crap. Unbelievable. I am barking up the wrong tree big time. Okay, look at this. Look at this. This is nuts. This is nuts. I am going to blow my brains out here. How is this even possible? I mean, is it the, is it, the, is it this thing sending out the wrong info? Okay. All right, what do we got here? Let's let's put it on. DC volts, here we go. DC volts, here we go, right? Coming out here is what? One, it's still one. It went down to one. All of the others are not one. What is pulling that? Look at this, it's all new. New resistor, new capacitor. New route on there. What? <sighs> what? It's not using the same, um, resistor here. It's not using the same one here. It's not using the same capacitor there. All right, measuring all the voltages on here. When it's hooked up to this pin, it drains this one. None of the others. When it's hooked up to this pin, this one's drained and the resistance is a lot lower. I mean, so I don't know. So um, I just did a jumper. So we are now using this buffer, inverter buffer, whatever it's called, instead of this one. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm dying here. This is driving me nuts. Okay. One more little screw here. So, if this doesn't work, then this chip is bad. There is nothing else on here that could be the problem. I mean, all the rest of the parts of the board work. Oh, craziness. Absolute craziness. Okay. 
Here we go. It's funny as the RAM doesn't seem to be causing trouble like it used to. Look at that, all all okay. Don't know why. And ship goes. Look at that, it doesn't go down. It was that chip. Now, I can't go down because I disconnected it from the second jumper. So let's... Hyperspace... Reverse works, up works. Hyperspace works. Let's try thrust and fire. So for some reason, the inverter was draining it and causing trouble. Let's go hook this up and wrap this project up. Oh my gosh. Ah! You devil! It was you! Pin 5 input, pin 4 output. So I just used this one instead because there's so much of this that's not used. So if you have the same problem, just use other parts on the board. Don't Oh, but this, see, this tested low, so I thought it was that. I thought the, it wasn't this, because when I moved it over here, it was now this one with low resistance. Unbelievable. It's over. It was this, it's this chip, and this chip still is bad. It's just we're not using that bad part anymore. We moved over and unbelievable. 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 Okay, we're done. Hey. I'll put these in the video description, so if you want to use them or refer to them, you can. So here's the down J3, the pin on J3. So all of these go to the controls, right, right to the uh, control panel. So this would be the down button. You push it, it hits a resistor. There's a node that goes up to this resistor pack, and that's the chip I replaced that didn't make any difference. This is the same one. It's just they split it in the drawing for clarity. It's the same resistor pack and there's a capacitor that ties to ground. This is um, IC4 was the problem. This in uh, tri-state inverter was bad and there's a lot of them. So if you see these, look at this. This is up but not used, not used, not used, not used. Not All of this is not used. You know, they make these boards for other games that might have more buttons or other buttons. So none of these were used, but all these work. So what I did was I cut the traces and I made the down go through one of these lines uh, just with some jumpers. And then, you know, it, it jumped back over here to give this chip the correct signal. And that's basically it. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know <laughs> I'm glad this was over with, but, you know, it would have been way cheaper just to buy a new board, but it's uh, great education. I mean, I didn't know any of this stuff, and thanks to Adam uh, at One Circuit. I'll put a link to his channel in the video description. Um, I watched a lot of his videos uh, in between the start of this video and the end. So without him, I, there's no way I would have understood uh, any of this. Um, anyway, that'll be it. Lots more videos to come. I have them all recorded. I just got to get them out and uh, uploaded. They might be out of order, but whatever. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.